Uh, okay, so, so this is the another solvent that is in our syllabus. This is the liquid ammonia. Liquid ammonia, as we know that ammonia at the room temperature, ammonia is, ammonia is gas because its boiling point is minus 33.35. So whereas the boiling point of its water is 100 degrees. So but water turns into the vapor at 100 degrees centigrade, whereas ammonia turns into the vapor at minus 33.35 degrees centigrade. So ammonia is a vapor in the gas is the, uh, in the room temperature so ammonia it is a colorless gas with a pungent smell so it is lighter than air its density is 0 0.589 times that of the air it is easily liquefied due to the strong hydrogen bonding between the molecules since ammonia we can look you can look down at this uh, figure so since the electronegativity of nitrogen and hydrogen varies very much they are therefore they can form a good hydrogen bond. So it is easily liquefied due to the strong hydrogen bonding between the molecules. And the ammonia boils at minus 33.3 and freezes to white crystalline at minus 77.7 .7 degrees centigrade. And its liquid ranges means the ammo liquid ammonia can be stable or we can have the do the reaction of liquid ammonia in the range from minus 77 to minus 33 degrees centigrade. So its heat of vaporization is 23.6 and it is self-ionizable in nature and act as an associated solvent. So in order to work uh, in the liquid ammonia, in order to work in the liquid ammonia, as ammonia is a very good solvent, in order to work in the liquid ammonia, we have to use such type of uh, uh, reaction conditions or such type of instrument that it should be very, uh, this is seen in the, as you can see in the picture that, okay. We have to maintain the temperature, low temperature, high pressure, etc. Okay, so advantages of liquid ammonia solvent. It dissolves alkali metal. What is alkali metal? Alkali metals are group one metal without reacting and can be recovered easily. Okay, this is the most important part. It dissolves alkali metal, that is group one metal. What are those group one metal like lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, etc. And they can be easily recovered by simply evaporation. And Number two, in aqueous medium, so in aqueous medium, this ammonia are used as a reducing medium. So in aqueous medium, a reducing agent means the, as a, the substance will be uh, oxidized. A reducing agent stronger than hydrogen cannot be used as it will react with water liberating hydrogen. Okay, so in such case, many alkali metal ammonia solution which contains mobile ammoniated electron say in such this i will come uh, this part i will come again so in such case many alkali metal ammonia solution which contain mobile ammoniated electron can be used for reducing the materials soluble in liquid ammonia and lastly ammonia has lesser tendency than hydrogen to undergo solvolysis reactions with dissolved solute solvolysis means lysis means breaking up so the solvent wouldn't be breaking up so ammonia wouldn't break up so that means Ammonia has leather, lesser tendency than water to break up during the reactions. So that is another advantage. So these advantages of liquid uh, ammonia as solvent must work at very low temperature and high pressure. Since boiling point of ammonia is minus, it should be minus, minus 33.5. And it is hygroscopic in nature. So reactions are done in a sealed tube. Hygroscopic means it, it can easily attract water and therefore it requires elaborate equipment okay now let us see some reactions okay some important reactions of liquid ammonia so number one we have the reaction is uh, most important reaction is auto ionization reaction this i have uh, told earlier also so ammonia molecules the ammonia solvent they break up into the ammonium ion and amide ion so this according to the solvent concept of acid and bases as we have learned in the unit one that is acid and bases in liquid ammonia amide and ammonium ion are the strongest possible base and acid so for example this example you can see sodium amide those 
sodium amide. Okay, sodium amide is uh, base. Then it, it is wrongly written here. Sodium amide is base and ammonium chloride is acid. So any substance that has this cation, it will act as acid. And any substance that has this anion, that is amide ion, it will act as a base. Now number two reaction is neutralization reaction. Neutralization reaction is also known as acid base reaction. Here let us take uh, the acid and base. So why this ammonium chloride? You can see the acid as ammonium chloride. Why this ammonium chloride is acid? Because if we look at the number one reaction, here the ammonia dissociates into ammonium ion and amide ion. So any substance which increase the concentration of this ammonium ion, that is NH4 plus will act as acid according to the solvent concept of acid and bases. Whereas any substance that increase the concentration of amide NH2 minus will act as a base. Therefore, here ammonium chloride which has ammonium ion will act as acid and sodium amide which has uh, amide ion will act as a base and they react to give sodium chloride and ammonium solvent, uh, ammonium ion or ammonia that is a solvent. So any reaction acid and base that reacts to give sol and solvent is also known as neutralization reactions. So the reaction between appropriate acidic and basic substances to form salts are called salt formation reactions. So these reactions can also be called as salt formation reactions. Okay. Now let us come to number three. This is the metathetical or precipitation reaction. So what is this precipitation reaction? That when we do a reaction, if we grade the precipitate, then those reactions will be precipitation reactions. Okay. So the reaction in which precipitation occur on mixing two solutes are called metathetical or precipitation reactions. Here, silver nitrate plus barium chloride, it will give silver chloride and barium nitrate. However, if we do this reaction in water, then the reverse reaction occur. That is, will precipitate silver nitrate instead of silver chloride. This is this silver chloride will be only precipitated in presence of liquid ammonia. Another example is that we can see that uh, you can see that sodium uride plus water it gives sodium hydroxide and urea. So sodium uride cannot be formed in aqueous solution. However, we can precipitate that sodium uride in the presence of liquid ammonia if we do this reaction in liquid ammonia then we can we, we can precipitate how by using by reacting urea with sodamide say nh2co nh2 and sodium amide if we react it then we can get uride okay so this is another method of obtaining uh, sodium uride now let us come to the fourth reaction here we have the uh, solvation reaction so as we know that what is a solvation reaction solvation reaction is nothing but uh, the reaction where the solvent are attached to the ion are known as solvation reaction. Okay, so you can see this example here is a copper sulfate. Copper sulfate reacts with the ammonia NH3. So the copper sulfate, you can see the product that copper sulfate reacts with ammonia to give ammo, copper sulfate and ammonia. So here the ammonia molecule is not dissociated, therefore it is not solvolysis. This reaction is known as solvation reaction. Okay. So another one is that copper chloride. Here copper chloride, if we react with water, then again we form copper hydroxide. Okay. No, the, uh, tetrahydrated copper complex. So here it is also water is not broken up, uh, broken up. So therefore it is also known as solvation reaction. Okay. So solvent get attached we can see the definition here solvent get attached to a solute species that is cation anion or molecules are called solvation reactions the species form is called solvates here the solvates will be copper sulfate and four ammonia molecule will be the solvate okay now another important uh, example of this uh, solvation reaction is that uh, this uh, you can see down here that uh, what is this that, that when the alkali metal that is group one metal when you dissolve it is a very interesting example when you dissolve in liquid ammonia uh, it does uh, it will give a blue color solution so when alkali metals are dissolved in liquid ammonia they ionize to give metal ion and balance electron as this sodium it will ionize to give sodium ion plus electron both alkali metal and electron become solvated by ammonia molecules. So this sodium ion, uh, ammonia ion are attached to the sodium ion as well as ammonia ion, ammonium solvent are also attached to the electron. So these are ammonated electron and ammonated, uh, ammonated cation. Because of this presence of this ammonated electron, 
the solution becomes the blue in color okay so the complete reaction is written here so the ammonated electron are responsible for the blue color of the solution so this is the most important reaction because of this presence of this electron so many reactions can uh, many reduction reaction can take place in the liquid ammonia okay so number five is complex formation reaction in uh, liquid ammonia what is the complex complex this is the here we can see the example in the zinc amide complex so zinc amide complex how it is formed that zinc nitride when zinc nitride react with the zinc amide we can form uh, zinc amide is formed however this is uh, not complex we cannot precipitate out it is sparingly soluble in liquid ammonia however when we add excess of zinc amide then what we obtain we obtain a complex known as zinc amide complex okay so we can see that the complex here then reaction of ammono acids in liquid ammonia what are ammono acids ammono acids are nothing but those acids which has this ammonium ion nh4 plus if the uh, if the compound has nh4 plus then it will be known as ammono acids okay so those uh, if any substance reacts with those ions then that will be known as ammono acid reactions in liquid ammonia okay it's here metal oxides and hydroxide dissolves in liquid ammonia metal oxides and hydroxide dissolve in liquid ammonia so sodium oxide reacts with ammonium chloride to give sodium chloride and ammonia plus water so this is an example of ammono acid reactions in liquid ammonia and lastly the last reactions of the liquid ammonia is that reactions of ammonia base it is same as the ammonia acids however only difference is that here in presence of uh, in uh, instead of ammonium ion we are using nh2 minus or amide ion okay silver nitrate react with potassium amide to give silver amide plus potassium nitrate so it is an example of ammonia base reactions okay so in this uh, i can just sum up here that in these reactions we have taken up seven reactions what are the seven reactions first one is the autoionization reaction second one is neutralization reaction which is also known as acid base reactions or salt formation reactions and the third one is that uh, precipitation reactions or metathetical reactions and number four is the solvation reactions or addition of solvent reactions and number five is number five is complex formation reaction number six is ammonia base reactions and ammonia acid reaction so mean there are also many other reactions that you can add up these are just the basic principles and one on example i have given up, i have taken up so from this i will go to another uh, that another solvent that is the hydrogen fluoride this is a hydrogen fluoride hydrogen fluoride is also very important solvent why hydrogen fluoride not hydrogen fluoride is a gas but as a liquid okay its melting point is minus 83.6 so its structure can be seen as hydrogen and fluoride they form a uh, the bond like this so boiling point is 19.5 degrees centigrade so it is uh, liquid at room not up to room temperature but up to 20 degrees centigrade and its solubility in water is completely miscible that is completely soluble in water and its dipole moment is 1.86 dBi unit and dielectric constant is 86 okay so hydrogen fluoride is an excellent solvent reflecting the ability of hydrogen fluoride to participate in hydrogen bonding because of this uh, large difference uh, because of the high uh, electronegative character of fluorine so it can form hydrogen bonding and even proteins and carbohydrate dissolve in hydrogen fluoride and can be recovered from it okay so but hydrogen fluoride is highly dangerous gas okay forming corrosive and penetrating hydrofluoric acid upon contact with moisture what is hydrofluoric acid hydrofluoric acid is nothing but echo solution of hydrogen fluoride if it is uh, if it is uh, solution with the water okay then the gas can also co cause blindness by rapid destruction of the corneas okay so that is the disadvantages okay just i'll just come to the this here i have taken up only three four reactions so i'll just come up to these reactions now the is uh, with the liquid ammonia the most important reaction is the autoionization reactions of the hydrogen fluoride here three molecules of hydrogen fluoride they dissociate into fluoronium ion and uh, the hydrogen uh, hydrogen difluoride ion okay so its ionic product is 10 to the power minus 14 it is high degree of autoionization because of this high degree of autoionization it 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 is acidic okay so a core solution of hydrogen fluoride are also called hydrofluoric acid okay next is precipitation reaction precipitation reaction means we should get some uh, precipitated so example is sulfate 
perchlorates and per iodates of non-alkali metals get precipitated when the fluoride dissolved in hydrogen fluoride. Okay, let us take this that uh, nickel, this is non-alkali metal, nickel is a non-alkali metal, it is a transition metal, so nickel fluoride, when it reacts with sodium sulfate, then we get the precipitate as nickel sulfate. So nickel fluoride, non-transition metal, just, just you remember, non-transition, this is not uh, non-alkali, okay. So again, thallium fluoride, which is a non-alkali metal, reacts with sodium perchlorate to give thallium perchlorate, okay, as a precipitate. So acid-base reaction, it is acid-base reaction is important. So hydrogen fluoride has a high degree of specific conductance, therefore it is a very strong acid. So therefore strong acids such as nitric acid and sulfuric acid behave as base in hydrogen fluoride. So according to the uh, theory of acid and bases, those substances that can accept hydrogen ion are base. They can accept proton or hydrogen ion or hydronium ion are base. So in this reaction, nitric acid react with hydrogen fluoride. So you see that in this reaction, what happened is that nitric acid is a very strong acid, but it reacts with the hydrogen fluoride. So nitric acid uh, except one proton, that is it has become a base in presence of liquid hydrogen fluoride. You see, therefore, hydrogen fluoride is a very strong base. Okay, however, the strongest acid, we say that perchloric acid, strongest acid in echo solution, it has amphoteric nature. It said that means that it can act as a base as well as acid in hydrogen fluoride. So here in the example, when it acts as a base, it take it accept one proton. However, if it acts as an acid, it donates one proton. Okay, so this acid-base reaction or the uh, tendency of this uh, acid forming is very important in this uh, acid base reaction as hydrogen fluoride okay and, uh, and uh, last one is that protonation reaction what is this protonation reaction since hydrogen fluoride are highly acidic means highly acidic means they have tendency to donate this electron okay so they have the tendency to donate this electron then what happen is that they donate this electron then they can donate this electron to the organic compound. These are non-polar uh, compounds. Therefore, if they donate this compound to the organic uh, proton to the organic compound, what happens is that the organic compound becomes ions. Therefore, they give conduction in solution or they are conducting solutions. Therefore, aromatic hydrocarbon give color solution in hydrogen fluoride. See, benzene is a non-polar compound. However, uh, when it reacts with the hydrogen fluoride, it accepts an electron to form C6H7 plus, plus fluoride ion. Therefore, it becomes conducting solutions. This is the, uh, so protonation reaction of hydrogen fluoride is very important reaction. Okay, so disadvantages, as I have told you before, hydrogen fluoride is poisonous and dissolve only a few substances without reacting with it. So without reacting with them, that means if the solvent react with the uh, solute then uh, we wouldn't get the desired product so most uh, so therefore hydrogen fluoride dissolves only a few substances that is its advantages so most non fluoride inorganic chemical react with hydrogen fluoride rather than dissolving so most non fluoride inorganic chemical react with hydrogen fluoride rather than dissolving it okay so Therefore, since hydrogen fluoride gas is also very poisonous, therefore hydrogen fluoride burns, kills. So therefore, this is one example that has its disadvantages. Okay, I think uh, 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 in the next class, I'll take up another unit for, uh, for this class. I think you uh, might have gained some knowledge with this uh, tutorials. Okay, thank you.